Freddie B here again and today's what we're going to show you is we're going to try and restore the paint on this really really faded 74 Maverick. Now the paint itself is not bad it's just oxidized severely. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the types of polishers that I use and the types of polishing agents that I use as well. One of the polishers that you, anybody can get it's basically you can get one of these handheld, use both hands type polisher. You can get it at any big box store anywhere around. But my personal favorite that I like using, and I also love using air tools. I have air polishers. That's my personal preference. I that's just a guy thing, and that's got nothing to do with the effectiveness of what we're about to do here. So follow along, and we'll make this car shiny. Okay, now one of the first steps that you have to do is you basically have to make sure that the surface is clean, i.e. wash the car and after you've cleaned the surface and given it a good wash, it's time to wipe the car down and make sure the surface is dry before you actually start your polishing. Now that we've got the car dried, we're going to go to the next step and I'm going to apply the compound and the first stage is to actually cut through the oxidization and I'll show you how I do it. Generally all glazing compounds are the same. It's your preference what you want to use. This is the, the compound that I use and the way I apply it, I apply a little bit onto the pads of the machine and I apply it onto the surface of the car. And you're basically, we're going to be using a rotating circular motion regardless of what polisher you use. You always keep moving in a circle and we're going to slowly bring the finish back on this car. Follow along and this is what I do. I apply the compound, not too liberal of an amount, onto the pads. And I like to sprinkle just a little bit onto the car. Not a lot because it's going to go crazy and you're just going to get it all over yourself anyways. Take your polisher. This one apparently has only one speed. We'll turn it on and you work it into the surface. You don't have to press too hard. You work it back and forth. Do that circular motion. And a good thing to do, you turn it off. And a good thing to do, and I like to do it during the whole process, take a microfiber towel and you start wiping down where you have been working. Now, this is probably 50 to 75 percent better than what we started with, which wasn't a lot. Now you can tell this is just one small cut and we've already got a highly reflective surface here. Now there, there are scratches that are inherent to the paint job because this thing's like 45 years old. I get that. But I'm just saying as we continue to cut this, we're just going to go over it again. I'm going to do exactly the same thing and you will see then I'll wipe it down and you will see how much the difference is between what we started with and what we have now. And just keep working it. You're not going to hurt anything here because it's not that abrasive that it's going to be taking paint off or whatever and keep looking at your pads. If you do see the color of your car on your pads, you are taking paint. At this point, we're just cutting oxidization. So this is what we're doing. All I took off was oxidization. A little bit of paint came with it, but that's not even in enough to worry about. Because you still have to use discretion. Like you don't go, don't go at it like you're using an angle grinder or you're, ang or you're mad at your ex or whatever. Don't go at it that hard. I'm just saying go over it again, repeat the process as necessary. I'm going to polish this one more time again, exactly the same way with the same compound. It'll come out even shinier. And once you see that it's starting to get chalky, stop. Wipe it down, apply more cutting compound, and continue on. Now we'll wipe this down. Keep flipping your cloth over as you're doing it because you always like to have as many dry spots on your cloth as possible to absorb the moisture. And then when you think you've just about got it all and it almost looks hazy, get a completely dry cloth. Microfiber is preferable. 
and then look at what you've ended up with. Now this is three applications and now I'm going to start putting on my next step will be a glazing compound. No sandpaper was involved. I'm just saying is you can actually do an entire car and make it look 100% better than what it was before. You're not going to be taking dirt out of the paint with it if there was dirt particles in your paint job. You're not going to be doing that with compound. You're probably going to have to go to a whole other step of wet sanding your car, cutting it, polishing it. Long process. You're not doing that in your driveway. But this is what we've ended up with now and the next step that I want to do is I'm probably going to put some polishing compound on and we're just going to take it from there. I've finished the rest of the trunk lid in exactly the same process that we did for the first part of it. No, no extra steps were taken. I basically did it three times to achieve the shine that the owner wanted. Now, the best shine in the world is one that you're happy with. So he's really happy with this. This car is 110% shinier than it was when we first started. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a glazing wax. And it's a glazing wax compound and it's a combination of the two. It goes on exactly the same way and you can bring up the shine even further and it will cover small, small imperfections in the paint like a scratch that was from polishing. Not us, but before many, this car is 40 years old. So let's take a stab at it and I'll show you the process. Basically the same, I apply the uh, polishing glaze onto the pads. There are a different set of pads on here right now. These are more of a denser foam and they're more used for polishing. Apply the pads, put a couple of drops on your car, just enough to make you happy. Take your polisher and start all over again. And again, you don't have to press too hard. Pressing hard doesn't really make things happen any faster. You're better off to use your compounds and your glaze and let them do the work. Once again, just keep moving it around. Don't hold it in one spot for too long. And you just keep moving. And I like to do probably a third of a panel at a time. Once again, just keep an eye on if the compound looks like it's getting dry on the car, i.e. the machine starts to work too hard. That means it's drying and getting sticky. So now we'll shut it down and we will wipe that excess off and you can wipe it off any way you want. I like doing it this way because it leaves enough on there to become hazy and then it's so much easier when you take your next dry cloth to just polish off the haze because you see like this is really easy to do. And that is just one coat of the glaze and wax. And feeling wise, you can actually feel that the car is smoother on this side than this side. And this was 100% better than what we started with. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to apply this three times onto here. And then you can get a good idea of exactly how shiny and how smooth it's become. Okay, so what basically happened was the initial polishing cut through the dead paint and the oxidization. It got you to the actual paint that we had to work with. Cut it down, made it increasingly shiny. What the polishing in the glaze is doing is it's filling in any small, small imperfections that came from the previous polishing. Because the more you polish stuff, you actually put in what we call swirl marks. And a glaze, a polishing glaze like the one I'm using is what actually fills in those little, those little, little scratches. I, I don't want to call it a scratch, but it's more like just little marks. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do this again and it'll fill in even more of those. And the smoothness, you'll just, it'll be really, really apparent to you once you see it. Let the polisher do the work. Let the compound do the work. 
Pressing harder does not make it any better. Just keep it moving. Circular motions if you can. If, the, if you're lucky enough to have a big panel like this, do the circular motions and just work that compound and glaze into the surface. Now if you'll notice, the compound on the car is no longer white like it was when we put it on. It's got sort of an orangey tinge to it. That's because every time we polish it, we're taking another layer of dead paint off. Now we're not sanding the car, don't get all upset about that. This is actually, the, I guess the car equivalent would be we're exfoliating the paint. And you wipe it across, just enough to get a haze on there. It'll, it'll just get hazy on its own. Use a nice dry microfiber cloth and polish it. You can rub it quickly. Actually, it works better if you rub it quickly because it actually dries the compound that's on there while you're polishing it. Now you can stop at this point or you can continue to do it again. Like I said earlier, the best shine is the one that you're happy with. So this is basically step number two. One more application of this and you'll see where we end up at. I know it's hard to see on film, but this thing is again shinier and smoother than it was before. I'm gonna apply a polish slash wax that has UV protectants in it and we'll just take it from there and it's just basically gonna make everything sealed. We're gonna seal it more than anything. So here we go. Apply a bit on the pads just like you did before. And a bit on the car. In the area that you want to do, I'm going to usually do one third of it at a time. And basically, we start all over again. And again, you don't have to press really, really hard. Let the product do the work. And don't be cheap with the product either because people tend to want to stretch it. I understand they want to stretch their dollar value and all that, but you know what? The car is the one that suffers because you end up putting a lot of this product on dry and that's not good. You might as well sand your paint as far as that goes. And we'll take a stab at that. Give it a cursory wipe. It goes off and on the same way that all the other processes went on. Give it a wipe. That'll haze up in a couple of seconds. And then you use a clean microfiber cloth and you polish it. And it's really easy to take off. You don't have to worry about wrecking your shoulders or anything like that or having to get the neighborhood nine-year-old to do it for you. Do it once, do it twice, do it a third time, then move on to the next process. So I'm going to polish this with the wax three times and then we're going to move on and I'm just going to do the rest of the trunk lid. So here we go again little bit on the pads. Now, the common mistake that people do is they, they want to finish everything quick. And, uh, well, waxing and polishing your car with, when you're trying to get rid of the paint oxidization that you have here, it's a time-consuming process. You're not going to do this. Don't start waxing your car just before the wedding because it's not going to happen. You can do that with any type of a detailing wax, but you're not going to get this level of paint correction in a short amount of time. You have to have patience, and if at all possible, try and do this in the shade, or if you don't have, if you don't have a shop, do it someplace cool, maybe under a carport, and because the sun just dries this product way too fast. Today happens to be a pretty humid day out because it's raining. So this product staying wet a really long time and it gives you a ample opportunity to work it into the surface. But it's pretty straightforward. You just wipe it back. I usually go in one direction for taking this stuff off. And if you want to press a little harder at this stage, it's good too. If you have the ability because all it's doing is working more wax into the surface. 
Get your dry cloth. This will haze up really, really quick. Get your dry cloth and the finish on this thing is incredible. Don't get me wrong, it's still 45 year old paint, but it's shiny 45 year old paint. And that's the cool part about it all. And I dare you to not like it. Okay, so we've done the wax and it looks incredible. And I just want to reiterate to everyone, this is not in lieu of painting your car. Not everyone has, the average paint job now is five to $7,000. Don't, don't even go there. If you think you have paint on your car that is restorable, like you'd like to polish it first, this is an easy alternative to do it. You're looking at maybe on the max $40 to $50 worth of product if you don't want to buy, if, if you have already have the polisher. Do your car, take your time. We've done this thing over the course of an hour and so right now and we do one stage at a time, one process, the next one and follow it up. The car has gotten progressively improved over each one of those processes. So all I'm saying is take your time, let the material do the work and you will be surprised if you have a car that has, you just think maybe it needs a bit more shine. Maybe I, I don't, can't afford to paint it. Polish it first see how it goes. This will bring a lot of crappy paint back. This process that I've done here today has to be repeated on the rest of the car. I mean that's, you got to know that, right? You can't just polish one part of your car. But it is for the every person to do. You get an electric polisher and all around the trim pieces and stuff where you can't get a polisher that's this size in there. Just remember, all this product can be applied with microfiber towels as well. You just have to rub a little bit harder around emblems and things like that. But just remember, the entire car can be done in your shop. It can be done in your driveway under your carport. It's not that difficult. And for more paint and body tips, don't forget to visit our website at driving.ca and there will be more of these instructive videos in the future. Have a good one.